for the last panel of the day uh, and a very uh, important thing uh, challenges of ransomware and ot security are organizations prepared and uh, for this we have again a very eminent set of panelists and it's my pleasure to call them on stage mr sharad kumar agarwal cdio of jk tire and industries Here we have uh, Mr. Sharad, Mr. Ajay Khanna, Vice President, IEV Commercial, Volvo iShare, Commercial uh, Vehicles Limited. Can we have Mr. Ajay Khanna? Sanjay Sharma, Head IT Infrastructure and Cyber Security, Shriram Pistons and Rings. Gyan Ranjan Dash, Head Information Security, CISO at HPCL Nithal Energy. Sanjeev Kumar Jain, Group CIO, Krishna Maruti Group. And Ajay, yeah. And uh, we will be uh, just uh, joined by Anwar Bilas Sengupta, uh, Chief Manager and Alternate CISO of Grid Controller of India. He is on the way, so he will join uh, the panel uh, in a couple of minutes' time. So, uh, we have been uh, having uh, the discussion even around security in the morning session also. Uh, when CISOs are assembled, again, they had talked about the importance of the OT security. So, uh, I'll start with each panelist and uh, to each panelist I'll come with the question of uh, since most of you are involved in a manufacturing setup where the operational technology system is itself very critical and uh, unfortunately in most cases these operational technology systems are legacy systems. So in this scenario, how critical it is to safeguard these OT systems in your environment and how geared is your organization for that? I'll start with Sharad. Hi, Pat. So, uh, a very good afternoon and thanks for having me. Probably gone are the days when OT systems used to reside in silos. True. So now, honestly, they have become even more critical than IT system because IT system can still bear a downtime of few minutes. But OT True. systems, if there's a process industry and a continuous industry, your complete line stops. And in some cases, that's not true in our case, but in some viscous lines, etc., it may happen that the nozzles are jammed and the maintenance may take a couple of hours. So from the perspective, OT, if is IT enabled, is equally or rather more important than IT network. All the organizations are doing their best from a terms of where do you, they do stand. So as and when the IT and OT networks are merging from specifically from a JKTI perspective, we are at a, I would say, a substantially good level so that we can keep them running all the time. Thank you. Great. Uh, great. So uh, next, Ajay Khanna, uh, Volvo, I share, I'll uh, come to you next. Again, uh, the OT environment, how uh, critical is the challenge to safeguard the OT uh, operations in your uh, organization? Yes, sir. See, OT is, uh, for most of the organizations, OT has been a dark domain. People have not even ventured into it, understanding what are the risks. But we've been talking about IT security for ages now. We very clearly understand the risks on IT platform. Okay. The risk on OT front needs to be first assessed as per the standards frameworks. Where are the risks residing? Because these risks are much more than the risk associated with IT. Exposures are much more. While we do not understand today the exposures, I'll give you an example. 
We, on a normal basis, on an IT environment, we have devices which are replaced after a period of five years or seven years or so on, so forth. When you come to OT, your machines are not changed for 25 years. True. You did, you, while those machines are running absolutely fine, the PLCs which have been put up in those machines which are connected or not connected, they are having exposures which are much, much higher than the IT environment. And you will not even have any updates or patches available for those. And you cannot change them also. So the risk as compared to IT, OT carries a huge amount of risk. Until unless you do assessment, a thorough assessment, categorize the risks, and then approach the resolution or remediation, you will not be able to fix the OT secure, OT environment security. We have carried out various uh, kind of assessments, etc., and we are in the process of categorization of all those risks, wherein uh, we have come up with an approach and a strategy for that. What needs to be protected? What is already secure, don't touch it. Okay. Also, at the same time, the future approach. Okay. When you're buying any new equipment, OT equipment, what are the standards and guidelines you need to follow to ensure that equipment that you're buying sustains for a longer period of time and you have policies and processes implemented to ensure security of those environments. So that's the kind of approach that needs to be taken to secure, fully secure the OT environment. So uh, very correctly you mentioned first uh, uh, sort of doing a thorough assessment, uh, then develop uh, policies around based on that assessment and then uh, creating uh, the future roadmap also uh, around that. Sanjay Sharma, the same, same question and as rightly Ajay mentioned, while the IT part, we see a lot of faster technology refresh, not so much happens in OT. They are just, not just legacy, but legacy. I have heard uh, in one organization, I think they were still working on Windows NT. But I, I don't think even Microsoft remembers when uh, they last had uh, Windows NT. Uh, so how big is that challenge? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I just sir is like he told me. Basically, uh, we are running a very legacy system in OT and work. Our motive and agenda is organization is production. <laughs> the production is running. There are no concern about the you know OT security. OT means the isolation of the network of the IT and OT. True. OT system is connected well connected to PLC and CNC machines. The workstation and desktop and other machine is very pretty old operating system running on the environment. And the challenge is, is the vulnerabilities. The challenge is data transfer to X to Y. Basically, the Y is our at IT environment where we have improved our environment with the latest version of the endpoints. We put EDR, XDR, we put DLP and different latest IT adoption and IT security environment. But in OT, we are running, as per Ajay is told, 25 years old environment. That is a compatibility issue. The compatibility True. issue, OT versus IT. Yes, we are already raised the concern to our management. I am from Shira. So basically our production is piston engine walls and things. And we raised our concern okay, that we need to upgrade our environment. But if you compare to OT environment versus IT environment, we can, uh, the revenue, the cost of capital of the IT, the workstation is not more than 60,000, 70,000. But in the OT environment, if we change one machine, this is a 10 crore, 20 crores. True. That is a huge amount of the environment. The, it will take time, but the question is security. Yes, we are pushing some of the patch manually. We are running some of the EDR and XDR on the agent basis. We blocks all the USB and pen drive on the, that environment and very limited access provide to the users to transfer the data one location to another location to en ensure it, the environment is secure. 
and another is awareness the most powerful thing which is missing as by my understanding is the awareness the user is not aware about the it security he is not aware about the vulnerability he is not secure about understand the virus also his focus only the production exactly data is moving inbound and outbound it doesn't he is not concerned about he is concerned about the my production is going True. on or not but the vulnerability like a nano somewhere wanna cry and we'll turn into I, that area uh, as a yes. uh, so basically discuss. okay okay my my uh, answer is we are moving ahead to upgrade our ot environment to be latest things of the secure so upgradation of the ot environment is a need of the hour and i'll come to you later yes budgetary constraint is one big yes. area and i'll come to you later on that gyanranjan dash uh, known as jrd uh, so uh, from hpcl uh, metal energy uh, in terms of uh, the critical vulnerability of ot and uh, what is happening in your organization yeah. okay see i think uh, uh, just before you start uh, Uh, we are joined by Anwar Vilas Shangupto, Chief Manager and Alternate CISO of Grid Controller of India. So, can we have you on stage? Correct. Why? You know, no, it's okay. So, ju- just for your briefing, uh, we are having the first round, and we are talking about uh, the critical vulnerability of the OT system, vis a vis the IT system, and uh, how. big is that challenge and how are you looking at it yes sir continue so okay. we uh, we run a critical infrastructure i mean it's our organization is a ciii because we run a highly flammable and uh, petroleum industry so you you asked your question was about how critical this is and uh, i think everybody talked about the legacy system and we compared about the it i don't think any any of the manufacturing system they are updated even if, if if it's a mid size manufacturing industry if you are designing something now uh, the time it gets operated it takes years by that time all these technologies are legacy <laughs> so in every manufacturing it's a kind of legacy and talking about the criticality uh, i always remember only one tagline uh, if you talk about the it security we always uh, try to save the data but if you are talking about the ot security we are trying to save the lives so we we all are talking about business but uh, what i learned in my life is uh, uh, definitely business but on uh, beyond business it's also life so if you talk about our industry or any industry i mean we are talking about we are running the machineries and uh, so and saving the life is very very important at the same time we have to also take some kind of measures where we can run the business coming back to the vulnerabilities what you said uh, i mean these are all uh, common vulnerabilities found in every organizations so uh, so visibility is definitely uh, the priority uh, like uh, sir was saying so we normally follow first from the governance side uh, he was talking about uh, the uh, i mean uh, the governance assessments and all and he was talking about the awareness so skill gap is also another major uh, i mean road block so that also adds to i mean a lot of challenges to the security professionals doing an assessment so assessments are very very requirement required and uh, once you do a assessment you come to know what is actually happening then uh, we present that to our management the good thing happening uh, in cyber security is now the management is aware what is happening in the world so they are supportive right now at least if i talk about my case but uh, whenever talking about the execution and mitigation then uh, their major focus is on availability so they will never focus on uh, patching something and uh, when something is legacy it's not like it that you upgrade the os or uh, so there are a lot of de- dependencies there is a complex supply chain also starting from the oem and oem compatibility is another thing uh, whatever i have seen in my experience in every manufacturing even if we have the on roll people they don't take the accountability they sure. always depend on the oem and that take the buy in from the oem then only they come and uh, they confirm us okay so that is a major road block we have the technologies available uh, to protect the ot but the, because so, of this oem dependency we are not able to deploy that also so the challenge in relation with the oems the skill gap and assessment are three areas yeah, that you would like governance is very very uh, essential and governance. So not from the governance always okay okay uh, sanjeev kumar jain i'll uh, 
your opinion on uh, the challenges in uh, the criticality of OT and how are you facing it? Good afternoon, everybody. So I think so my learned friends have already talked about the IT and OT factors of it. But to in my case, what we have done that we have done the convergence of IT and OT. The uh, OT platform has now been taken over by IT. So that at least that awareness part and their uh, gaps which were there in between. So those are being taken over by the IT part of it. Now what we have done is that since as everybody talked about that these are the legacy systems which cannot be upgraded or nothing can be put on this system because these are hardened systems but they still carry IP with them and that, that become an attack factor for anybody else for that. So what we have done, we have done spatial segmentation. We have done demilitarization of the particular OT environments and on top of it now we are working on the NDR solutions to be put on over there so that we are able to do better monitoring through a SOC service or a SIM services and see what the east and west traffic is coming over there and then that can be protected. Because uh, when a machine is down, nobody is going to listen to you that I will not give the access of this particular machine to my OEM to get it rectified. Mm -hmm. And in that particular scenario, you are going to expose your machine to the external one. So mm -hmm. in order to do that particular part, we have done the complete VLAN configurations for the machine separately so that at least in case that is being affected we should be able to at least segregate that particular part of moment of the time and before we bring it back to the network we do a complete scanning of those machines that it is not being affected by any uh, things and then we monitor the traffic only after that we bring it into the things. So and uh, other part of it is that we are just yes, talking to the OEMs that whether they have the technologies which can be put on top of the legacy machines. Although mm -hmm. the so far we are not able to get uh, any OEM who say that I will be able to replace a 25 year old machine with a new software to be put on over there. Uh, so they come up with a, such a huge budget and the downtime they ask you for uh, that upgradation is not feasible because those machines are very critical to you. So this is some things which are going on in the organization, but IT OT convergence is one major thing which we have done to bring the uh, remote factors. And I'll talk about the IT OT convergence a bit in the next round. First, uh, Anna Vilash, uh, your opinion on this. Um, thank you. Uh, and I'm uh, really sorry to be late. Now, so far as uh, basically the challenges which we face in IT, we surface the challenges which we face in OT. Uh, I'll try to uh, take uh, the discussion to a different direction altogether, where I believe uh, we are still really struggling to demarcate the boundaries of IT and OT. In many of the industries we have seen, at least in my industry, I uh, represent the load dispatch centers of uh, India. Uh, Grid India runs the national and uh, uh, regional load dispatch centers. And I'm very deeply associated with the SLDC infrastructures also. They are basically, you know, I mean, we all talk about Purdue model. We all talk about, okay, industrial control systems. But where basically we are defining the exact perimeters of the IT and OT, and where the IT and OT is getting converged, exactly where we need to put which type of security, selection of that at times are a bit challenging. And many a times we fail in actually selecting the right thing at the right place. The second challenge that we find, obviously we have already talked about the legacy applications, the timeline. Most of the OT systems are real time. Now, whenever we talk about real-time systems, even if you have a patch with you, even if you have maybe uh, some solution for protecting that, getting a proper downtime in a real-time system is difficult. And many of the cases, basically, you don't have that much of a redundant system available with you where you can afford to have a downtime for basically upgrading your OT. There is, again, another challenge which I believe uh, need to be highlighted. Third, very important thing that whenever we are talking about uh, OT security, basically what we are trying to say is many a times I have seen that when we are trying to say OT security, there are very specific protocols, uh, uh, specific securities, very specific uh, application level security where we miss that and we try to find out, okay, these are not connected to internet, maybe these are not exposed to internet, so my security layer won't be working on that fashion. 
but there are a lot of point of convergences. The attack surfaces, identification of the attack surfaces, where the point of convergence are, where from basically the vulnerabilities can be exploited in a very widely spread OT network is difficult. It's very difficult to really identify. I'll just give you an example. Suppose uh, we have a SCADA network, okay? Now, this SCADA network, suppose at my load dispatch center, which is at the national layer, is connected to the, for uh, integration, is connected to the regional level layer load dispatch centers, and further it is connected to the state layer load dispatch centers. Now, these are all are interconnected system, and we are considering our perimeters. But exactly, maybe deep down below in some state load dispatch, uh, dispatch, uh, dispatch centers, maybe a very small uh, load dispatch centers like Sikkim or Goa, there could be certain integration with their uh, uh, with their IT, or there could be no, no integration with the IT where there, there could be certain lapses in the physical security of that system, okay. where the attack surface or where from the attack can happen. So whenever we are talking about OT, as it is very widely spread, the visibility of the OT is not very much clear to us. There are further more vulnerabilities. So these are few points I believe. Thanks, um, thanks uh, for elaborately pointing. So. OT security, but I'll come back later. Uh, another very important point, uh, more from the IT perspective, uh, are the challenges, and especially all of you represent manufacturing setup, where maybe all the employees or the workforce, as you rightly mentioned, they're more interested in production. They might not be that IT savvy. So ransomware, and a uh, couple of areas where ransomware hits is uh, through human errors, and uh, illicit download, downloads. Uh, so starting with you, uh, how are you managing uh, the ransomware uh, challenges and sort of sensitizing the employees uh, so that they are not vulnerable to those attacks? Okay, okay. so uh, coming to the second part first. So we have been conducting people security assessment and management uh, studies using uh, court software available in the market. We are doing a phishing simulation, what's of phishing okay. simulation, all type of simulations, and then publishing the results, though unnamed, and then asking our team members to go through a mandatory training, security awareness training, which they have to pass with 80% marks. If they have, so that's part of education. Secondly, we coming to the first part, we follow a iron hand policy in which nothing is granted. So if something has to be specifically granted, it goes through a, a very red tape bureaucratic process in which people then say, Isse to nahi <laughs> but it's still, but if some business, if it's a, so it's a call which lies with our department, if it's something business critical has to be granted for a short term. So it would be allowed on a, I would say, isolated system in case of a machine is down. I would like to understand, say JK Tire, you will have multiple, uh, say factories and in different geographies, different regions. True. So is this followed standardized across all these or? Yeah, so it's followed standardized across the Indian plants, but in Mexican plants, we are playing a catch up. So whatever we implement here, we are playing a catch up there. But still, so some, as I said, we are following iron and policy. So we are not allowing anything uh, to miss only the allowed whitelisted applications can be downloaded and people even cannot use uh, any even on the company laptops even outside of JK network they can not, they can only follow the policies which are enabled uh, by us so probably good or bad difficult to say from our openness perspective we may sound a bit uh, dated old thought but yes this is a, I would say a conventional way of doing that we have been following and luckily, things are in control as of today. Great. Great to know. Ajay, uh, in Volvo, how are things happening in terms of ransomware? Yeah, it is easier said than done. <laughs> okay. Ensuring that every person is aware and adheres to the guidelines and processes <laughs> is, is a big task, a big ask also. Even if you achieve... 80% of that, you're still at a good, safer place. 90% of your ransomware protections, etc., can be done through technologies, okay? But the remaining 10% is critical. And those gates are 
even unidentified from where it can come in. You can do all kinds of controls, all kinds of, and one small, tiniest gate which is open can lead to a disaster. And then just maybe since all of you represent manufacturing setup, uh, this trend might be less uh, there. Uh, but after the COVID thing, uh, this work from anywhere concept has grown across industries. And uh, that means a uh, lot of BYOD or uh, people working from anywhere with their own device outside of the organizational network. Uh, so uh, must be less in manufacturing. You can't end of the day manufacture from home or uh, from there. But uh, still, uh, is that a vulnerability challenge from Ranzambar perspective? See, it is there because you, you not only work with employees, your employee, so, you have supplier, the extended have dealers, ecosystem, have extended workforce. You have contractual people working from anywhere, and as Mr. Singh Gupta also identified that a remote location, which is there, any kind of a small inter, you are not monitoring it until unless you monitor each and every aspect of it, you will not be able to ensure that you are able to detect. So detection is one capability that you need to build in into your environment, which covers pan entire IT landscape. Okay. So if you are able to detect in time, you will be able to take corrective or preventive action. Great. If you're not able to detect, you don't <laughs> even know what's happening. Exactly. So detection okay. capabilities have to be enhanced. So that is a must the for all emphasis industry. must be on the detection capabilities. Okay, Sanjay. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, basically, uh, Ajay sir is rightly told and Sada sir. So basically, the major challenge of the industry is uh, Reno somewhere, one cry, or different type of the, you know, malware attacks. Basically, uh, as per my understanding, is a more awareness. Just we can minimize the attacks from the different policies, procedures, tools, and different software. The first we analyze our environment where we are, we are weak. And we need to take proactive action to put more strength on security. For example, <clears throat> if I am say, I say ki I am a fit. How could I say I am fit? Because if I am overconfident, or maybe I am saying on the behalf of this state, my data is sage. Only health, for health environment, maybe my assessment, health department, my blood report, my other report says where we are strong, where we are weak. True. Let's say I am a diabetic, over diabetic. We take start the medicines, start the procedure and process and reduce the that level. Same process of the virus and other attacks. We put different technology like the antivirus is a signature which technology is outdated. Now, the time to adopt a new technology, EDR and XDR, is an AI-based technology. True. Uh, second, the SOC, the Security Operations Center. We put that environment to analyze our logs, where the, the Sanjeev Sir rightly told, monitoring. Maybe our logs should be analyzed. True. Where the data is going and where the data is coming. And, and too many other, before, if my home, any, what police say, to any koi bhi crime honi se pehle dastak hoti hai. If we understand that is it, something is coming, we take proactive action. True. That is proactive action, provide only the soft. Maybe some of the vulnerabilities coming, some of the ad waves coming. We are analyzing the, some of the data is behaving mis malfunctioning. Then we hmm. start proactive action. Then we can stop the next level of the things. Okay. And second, network assessment, where our firewall is weak, we get regular checkup of the configuration. We check our, our, the, um, our switch and other configuration. There, where is the port is, the, is open for the environment, the attacker is ready to attack. His, okay. his non-stop uh, knocking your door, but just waiting for you open the just door and enter you at your so sure. just we ensure it where we are we and we put more strength on the different technology. 
ठीक है सो बेसिकली यू आर सेइंग डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ असेसमेंट डूइंग इट प्रॉपरली एंड देन पुटिंग द राइट टेक्नोलॉजीज ज्ञान आई कम टू यू यू हर्ड ऑफ दिस रैंजम चैलेंजेस हाउ क्रिटिकल इज आइडेंटिटी बेस्ड मैनेजमेंट especially at different levels uh at and having uh, controls accordingly set up for those so identity based management to prevent the ransomware okay. see identity is identity is definitely the critical thing uh, nowadays <clears throat> because uh, uh, gone are the days uh, when our data center is on premises and we put a firewall and uh, we are safe so previously if you talk about uh, a perimeter then everybody used to think that only firewall is the perimeter device but nowadays uh, identity is the new perimeter for last couple of years and uh, for, uh, i mean we can say <coughs> it's for user experience or for security for both also we started using single sign on even uh, because this is easy to maintain and it can give more security but at the same time if your identity is that then everything is gone so it's very very uh, important to i mean uh, have robust security for uh, identity i mean uh, everybody knows the basic controls like mf and all everybody is doing uh, i mean implementing that so same is critical for ot also <coughs> so uh, uh, there is a separate approach in ot and uh, identity also takes the same kind of uh, criticality in ot because uh, when we uh, we talked about the assessments and all so in every assessment uh, there is a major bold line item that we have simple passwords we have lot sure. of passwords so uh, <laughs> we also use a i mean identity based solution there where we can integrate everything and we can manage that so uh, that is definitely important so i would say identity is the new perimeter so we have to be more focused on that sure sure uh, sanjeev uh, you talked about the it ot convergence earlier so i'll talk about ask you about a lot of these iot sensors are coming up in organizations uh from a ransomware and other malware perspective how uh, how does it pose a challenge for an organization like you okay see uh, whenever you talk about any ransomware attack or any malware attack the malware attacker and the ransomware attack will always write on to the devices and then only it will try to encrypt it what sure. generally happens in an ot environment it is always a one way traffic you are not sending anything outside you are just sending the things from ot devices to any other sure. but in 99% cases you are not getting anything out from outside and writing it back to the ot side of it okay so what we have done in our cases is that we have allowed only one side one way traffic from the ot devices but we are not allowed the outflow to the ot devices directly that is what i said that whenever we are doing anything we are allowing somebody to look into my machines we segregate that machine out from the network we isolate it from that particular thing then only we allow somebody to look into it and the moment that somebody has done his job we scan that particular things by whatever mm-hmm. tools available and then we just put it onto a, a sandbox sort of thing for seeing whether any traffic is coming out from outside onto that particular device so that is the only way as we find today is uh, you can uh, safeguard the ot devices because uh, you as everybody talked about that ot devices are so hardened by the legacy things that you cannot put any endpoint security over there so there is i don't see uh, rather i have been talking to a lot of people in ot security so everybody just talks about okay we can give you 99.9% of security and whenever there is a breach that breach always falls in 0.11% of that thing <laughs> and uh, nobody agrees that the system was at a fault so it is in our interest to see how we can safeguard our interest and see how the uh, we can give the uptime of it so that is what we have done we have created three levels of segmentation one is the vlan configuration perimeter security as i uh, talked about we have done the access control over there then vlan then after that we have done the demilitarization of separately for that and allowing only one way traffic from the ot devices no back traffic to okay. that so, so this is how we have done three levels of security in terms of perimeter access control and, and the demarcation okay uh, on abilash um, the i'll this ransomware thing and uh, we heard about malware sandboxing also so how about measures like ring fencing or malware sandboxing uh, how they help in this ransomware scenario 
Ah, well, a uh, few points. One obviously is one obviously is that uh, whenever we talk about perimeter security, obviously now you are doing a uh, intrusion detection or prevention system. You are doing sandboxing. Maybe at layer seven, basically you are uh, doing a deep packet inspection and try to identify the basically uh, known unknowns. Basically, these are known unknowns. Uh, and uh, uh, if it is not exactly a signature-based analysis, obviously, if you are doing analysis based on heuristic, you can max to max identify some of those typical patterns or signal identification marks where you can see, OK, this is a suspected traffic. I may not allow this. Now, so far as uh, typically ransomware or that type of malware is concerned, the problem is it is it many a times are not detected at the perimeter layer. It's not basically passing through your perimeter. Maybe it's coming as a mail attachment or maybe it is coming as an embedded uh, link in some of the JPEG file or something like that, which at times may be skipped. And there, basically, as rightly pointed out, the user intervention, the user awareness is very important. Now, I'll, that's why I come from uh, that user intervention and user awareness first. In many forum, we have tried to discuss and try to think and what uh, what should be the best solution. Now, uh, I believe, it's my personal belief based on the informations which I have received and my experience, that if we go with those layers of that identify, protect, detect, I believe rather than identify, protect, detect, basically response and recover uh, works more for this type of attack. You should be very much prepared to response and recover from a system. So when, whenever we basically uh, try to train our people, we train them obviously uh, the best practices, the do's and not, not to do's, all those are okay. People know and we continuously uh, give them those inputs. But then also mistakes happen. So basically we train them how to quickly recover. What are the tools we have to quickly recover? So that is one part. And so secondly, this is, one disease, yeah. this is one disease where prevention might not work. So cure is the only work. thing. Yeah. Okay. And secondly, only thing is in your perimeter, obviously, uh, like the visibility in shock all those things. It's a very constant effort. You have to continuously improve your system. The visibility, the typical visibility available from any standard SIM or any standard tool is good. But basically, we have to do the user behavior analysis, the, the UBA or that type of a next generation SIM, where you need to continuously improve your uh, basically correlation rules, your uh, patterns, what you are developing, your models you are developing. That is one challenge. You need to have that type of a good quality man for to do those things okay That's okay important. thanks right. right so to add on to that uh, yes when you talk about quality manpower there are very limited skill set people available mm -hmm. in the industry uh, i've been talking to several organizations several people everybody is interested in doing vulnerability assessment and penetration testing nobody talks about remediation <laughs> vulnerability <laughs> remediation and says that okay we will do remediation for you Everybody wants to take a pie on the assessment. Assessment is known, is is aware. Nobody talks about the reputation. That's okay. a big challenge. Yeah, the is missing in app. <laughs> Basically, now we are dealing with unknown unknowns. The biggest challenge, known unknowns, now we know. We all are discussing so much. Even too many unknown unknowns, unknowns are very difficult. Not your door for the VAPD. But if you ask asked the one of the reputation, raise the hand. <laughs> you do it independently. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot. It you is. Cannot. You know. You don't even know how to do it. Yes. And his great. Uh, uh, so I will uh, have a quick last round, 30 seconds to each panelist. I'll start with you, Sharad. Uh, so at JK Tire, uh, one OT uh, related action which you are going to take in the next three to four quarters. So uh, related to security or? Related to security or, okay. Okay. So means what we are trying to do, we are trying to build a standardized analytics IoT layer okay. and making, trying to keep it secure with a standardized way. So that's our plan. It's not 18 months, it's roughly 36 months plan that we are embarking on. So standardization of analytics and security, when that has to, uh, a lot of these compliances also will come into play, which you have to... No, compliances uh, means... 
ஒரு <laughs> so we are extending the complete I means it's a very long road map that we we have planned so trying to be one of the best uh, in the league of say tata steel or asian builds we are trying to be go there our target let's see where we reach okay great ajay from a volvo perspective the one cyber security action 30 seconds for it yeah one we have uh, almost nearly finalized our ot security strategy so we have Uh, defined that in what for what areas domains what would be applicable so you will not be able to protect everything you will probably have to work on as i said that you will have to work on recover for certain areas so define it very clearly we have a complete visibility of ot asset base that okay. is that is something which most organizations do not even have so that we have done so our approach now is to once you finalize the strategy just deploy that strategy across all manufacturing locations so strategy around assessment of the ot assets and then uh, building uh, formulating policies around it sanjay you have 30 seconds kya yeah. basically uh, the first is in a subject line is a we are or adopt new technology at its internet and digital issue second put more security and upgrade our dsc system and third more focus on the M- MES, where the rejection is going, we can put all the more si- uh, analytical data on the OTS. Okay, That's great. Uh, so, more and more uh, leveraging of analytics. Jan? For me, first, uh, as per our strategy, uh, we are trying to put a strong governance, defining uh, what would be the responsibility of the OT team and then uh, the information security or IT team. Then, uh, continuous visibility, definitely, with uh, trying to put some kind of uh, OT SOC. and uh, then awareness is a strong uh, critical thing i mean improving the skill gap will not say this is some kind of efforts we are doing where uh, we are planning some training i mean specific training for the ot team uh, uh, so the mandatory training is there but it is specifically for the instrumentation team and ot team how they can handle all these kind of things so and last is of course the generative ai where uh, we can again that is part of uh, the skill improvement strategy only because you don't have any kind of skill so that can probably help in improving so that in that gen gen ai has come up as a um, uh in the implementation strategy of most organizations throughout the day we have been hearing it and maybe it was yes and maybe the uh service providers or solution providers are operating in gen ai environment shall uh, should take notice of this uh yes uh sanjeev so uh, what we are doing i think so we are uh, trying to get some new technologies based on uh, ot signatures to in place which are uh, being told that is available in the market so we are working on that particular part so that we are able to put some ndrs over on top of the xgr and uh, mdrs so that uh, we are able to analyze the pattern of the traffic which is coming from these devices and analyze on using some ai techniques so that uh, we don't get into a situation of downtime so what is it nature to analyze the traffic uh, okay and on uh, yeah lot of things basically uh, in our new scada we are trying to implement nac identification of software bomb very important we are doing that identification or we are creating separate management zone but i would like to highlight one thing which i would like the august audience also to ponder upon what we are now trying to do basically you know the one of the challenges if you if you put separate sock for it and ot you need double manpower double control room all those things which is really not easy to leverage now but if you put your it sock and put uh, try to transfer the ot uh, data or ot information to the it then you are opening the it ot convergence you are opening that gate so what we are now doing basically we are putting a separate lock collector in ot then so basically we are narrowing down the it ot convergence we are putting data diode through which basically we are transferring the log ot log to it for monitoring as a ot sock 
And finally, the third thing what we are trying to do, basically we are testing on a POC basis and we will be implementing also, we are in dialogue, that we, uh, we need some convergence in the IT OT layer where basically we need data from IT to OT also. So we are putting a uh, data diode in differently biased, one from OT to IT, another from IT to OT, and trying to test whether that is creating an air-gapped environment. And we have also tested that and we have got a success in that, creating an air-gapped environment, then also integrating in bi-directional way through data diode. That is another technology we are now working on. Great. Thanks. Thanks. With that, uh, we come to a conclusion of this panel discussion. Before we disperse, uh, we would like to uh, recognize and felicitate uh, all our panelists uh, for their contribution uh, to uh, IT implementation in their uh, organizations. And for the award, I would like to call on stage Mr. Gopi Krishna Arora, who is one of the co-founders of APAC News Network, uh, to hand over uh, the award.